Hi everybody, I'm back again and this time we're going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers and remember what mixed numbers are. Mixed numbers are numbers that have two different pieces. They have a whole number piece and a fraction piece. So when we're doing adding and subtracting we have to take that into consideration when um, we work these problems out. So we're going to go to the board and I'm going to help you do this. Okay. I have two problems up here. Let's start with the easier one first. We're going to take the whole number 5 and we're going to add it to 7 and 3 fourths. Now when I look at this, I notice that the 5 doesn't have any fraction at all. So since it doesn't have a fraction, the 3 fourths, I can just bring him down because there's nothing for me to add him to. All I have to worry about is 5 plus 7. 5 plus 7 makes 12. So that is 12 and 3 fourths. And I'm done with that. I can't reduce the fraction in any way. So that's it. On this case, um, 9 and 3 fourths plus 7 and 1 half. Now on this one, you're going to have to find common denominators. So what we want to do is instead of just doing the fractions and just doing the whole numbers, what we're going to do is a much easier way we're going to change each one of our mixed numbers into improper fractions before we get started. So remember how to do that. To do that you do 7 times 2 and that made 14 and then I do 14 plus 1 makes 15. So that makes 15 over 2 because you don't change the bottom you just slide it across. And then I do the same thing with the other one. 4 times 9 is 36 and 36 plus 3 makes 39. Okay? Now, in order to finish this, now I have to go through the process of finding a common denominator like we did on the previous modules. Um, and so I have a 4 and a 2. My common denominator is going to be a 4. And remember the rule, if you change the denominator, you have to change the numerator. So the first fraction, I didn't change the bottom, so I don't have to change the top. In the bottom one, I went from 2 to 4 by multiplying by 2, so that means I have to do the top times 2, which makes 30. Okay? After you do that, then you can finish the rest of the rhyme. Write the bottom, collect the top. That would be 39 plus 30 makes 69 over 4. Now that is an improper fraction. A lot of times you can leave it like this, but if they ask you to change it to a mixed number, well, you need to know how to do that. And we did that on a previous lesson. And in order to change an improper fraction to a mixed number, you do division. You take the denominator, goes outside, he's your divisor, which is the number you're dividing by. And we divide that into the dividend, which is the number on the inside, which is your numerator. And then I'm going to um, go through the division process. 4 divides into 6 one time, which makes 4. And that leaves me 2. Bring down the 9. Now 4 divides into 29 seven times, which makes 28. So that leaves 1. So that is 17 as a whole number. And the remainder 1 is your numerator and 4 stays your denominator. So 69 over 4 changes into 17 and 1 fourth if you are going to um, change it back to a mixed number. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is subtraction. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to start with a subtraction problem. Um, you have 9 and 4 sevenths minus the whole number 7. So we're going to do a couple of different problems. On this one you'll notice that there's a fraction at the top this time instead of at the bottom. Because when you're subtracting, remember what's on top, you take away what's on bottom. So if I have 4 sevenths and there's nothing here by the 7 to take away, then I just drop my fraction down into my answer, 4 sevenths. And then that way all I have to do is subtract the whole numbers, 9 minus 7, which would be 2. 
So two and four sevenths would be my answer, okay? Um, on the other problem that we're gonna do is like the reverse of that, we're gonna take the whole number and stick him on top. So that would be 11 minus three and one fifth. Now you might be tempted to take the one fifth and drop it down, however, when you're doing subtraction, you have to take one fifth from something. And right now there's nothing there. So the old way was to borrow one from 11 and make it a fraction, but there is an easier way. And the easier way is to make them both have equivalent fractions, make them improper, and then make them have equivalent fractions. I'm gonna move it over. So I have some more room to work it out. So I want to rewrite these as improper fractions first. So I do five times three is 15. 15 plus one makes 16 over five. And 11 is what we call a real number, which is a whole number. And all whole numbers have an understood one under them. So now I have two fractions. And now I have to go through the process, find a common denominator. Well, there's only one that matters, right? There's one times five, and that's five. Now on the top, I changed. I went from one to five by multiplying by five, which means I do the top times five, so that's 55. On the bottom, I didn't change that, so I don't change the bottom number, or the numerator at the bottom. And then I subtract. So now I have 55 minus 16. So when I do that, that's 15. That makes a four. So four minus one is three. 15 minus six is nine over five. So that's 39 fifths. Now, once you do this, you can do like we did when we were adding and you change it into a mixed number. So that would be five on the outside, 39 on the inside and we divide. Five divides into 39 seven times, which makes 35, and that leaves us four. So the answer would be seven and four fifths. Now this is not the way they used to do it, but if you change them into improper fractions first, before you go through finding a common denominator. If you do it this way, you will never have to borrow and rename any of your fractions, okay? This is a much easier way, and it's easier to remember. So I hope that helps you out. And when we come back, we're gonna do order of operations.